what's the population of Toronto? Well, that's easy. Just head over to Google and voila, 2.73 million. And that's based on the 2016 census. But that seems rather small, right? And this trend seems to be in every one of Canada's largest cities. Montreal is only 1.7 million. Again, this is based on the 2016 census. Just assume that all numbers in this video is on the 2016 census. Uh, Vancouver, only 631K. I mean, Vancouver is not even a city of over 1 million people. So now this begs the question, are Canadian cities actually this small? Well, the short answer is, Kind of, but not really. Alright, let's take Toronto as our first example. Toronto is actually such a good example of a phenomenon that is really common in North American cities known as sprawl or suburbia. You see, the city of Toronto only has direct control over this boxed area, colored in red. This area is the city limits of Toronto, which accounts for the 2.73 million inhabitants we saw earlier. This is also the urban center of Toronto and where you find most things that are associated with Toronto such as the downtown core. Now if we look beyond the city limits, we see that there are plenty of areas that are built up and almost seem like they are part of Toronto. This is known as the GTA or the Greater Toronto Area and they are actually a bunch of separate municipalities each having a separate municipal government. To be more precise, the GTA encompasses 25 municipalities spread out in an area of 7,127 square kilometers and with a population of 6.42 million people, making Toronto actually the fourth largest urban area in North America just after Chicago. Now these large urban areas are often referred to as agglomerations and in Canada they are called CMAs or Census Metropolitan Areas. In the case of Toronto, they just kind of gave it a catchy nickname like the GTA, but the Toronto CMA does not actually include all municipalities in the GTA. And just as an interesting side note, for a metro area to be considered a CMA, multiple adjacent communities must exist, all centered around a main core. The agglomeration must also have over 100,000 inhabitants, with the main core having a population of over 50,000 people. Now let's spend some time looking at these communities in the GTA. The largest being Mississauga, which is surprisingly the sixth largest city in Canada, hosting a population of 721,000. Again, the 2016 census. The city is almost unknown to most Canadians as it is completely shadowed by its famous and larger neighbor, Toronto. Most simply think it's part of Toronto and ironically, the city hosts the Toronto Pierce International Airport despite it not actually being in Toronto proper. Now to put this into perspective, Mississauga is actually larger than Vancouver if you only take Vancouver city proper. Now to understand its lack of popularity, you have to look at the purpose of this community. Mississauga acts almost entirely as a suburb of Toronto with almost all requirements of a larger city being completely met by neighboring Toronto, making it almost completely dependent. Toronto provides almost all the amenities such as a large business district and residents of Mississauga simply commute to Toronto, remarkably reducing the industrial and commercial importance of Mississauga. In fact, this is the case for all communities in the GTA region. Oakville, Burlington, although Burlington residents might choose Hamilton instead of Toronto, Brampton, Richmond Hill, Markham, Pickering, Ajax, Oshawa, and many smaller communities all have the same functionality of Mississauga. Now moving on to other cities in Canada, we will notice that this phenomenon actually repeats itself for all of Canada's largest cities. Montreal, for example, has a very similar dynamic than Toronto. Montreal, city proper, is isolated within the island of Montreal with a population of 1.7 million. We can also notice with this map that there are several chunks carved out of the city limits which are independent municipalities, some of them being relatively small such as Mont-Royal and Westmount. The southern part of the island is also dominated by a cluster of independent municipalities, 
However, most of Montreal's satellite municipalities are actually found outside the central island on the northern and southern banks of the St. Lawrence River. The largest of them being Laval and Longueuil, with Laval hosting a population of 422k and Longueuil a population of 240k. These are collectively known as Greater Montreal or the MMC, Montreal Metropolitan Community. Unlike Toronto, Greater Montreal is all part of the same CMA and accounts for a total population of 4.02 million inhabitants. These communities, just like Toronto's neighboring communities, are mostly suburban and depend on Montreal for almost all amenities such as employment and opportunities. Now Vancouver, in my opinion, is the most interesting agglomeration in Canada due to the insignificance of the territorial limits of the city proper as well as its population. If only considering the population of the city proper, Vancouver actually drops to 8th largest city in Canada, dropping below Winnipeg with a total of 631,000 people. Now as we can see with this map, Vancouver city limits are quite small and are a similar size to satellite municipalities like Burnaby, Richmond and Surrey. This in large explains the city proper's smaller population when compared to Toronto and Montreal. However, when we include all neighboring communities, Greater Vancouver becomes once again the third most populous city in Canada with a total population of 2.46 million. This also means that Vancouver does not necessarily dominate its satellite communities by population as Surrey, for example, has a population of 518k being 76% the size of Vancouver. Vancouver, like Toronto and Montreal, does dominate in terms of commercial and industrial importance with all large amenities being located within the city proper. And it also completely dominates in terms of fame as Surrey, Burnaby and Richmond are relatively unknown compared to Vancouver. The city proper is also where you'll find all the skyscrapers and where the headquarters serving the Pacific coast of Canada tend to be located. Well, now you might be asking yourself, well, are all Canadian cities like this? Do they all have agglomerations with many independent municipalities? No, actually. Uh, Toronto, Montreal, and Vancouver are actually exceptions within Canada and are the only major cities within Canada that have a major agglomerations with independent municipalities. This is not very surprising as historically, Toronto, Montreal, and Vancouver quickly became the most important cities within Canada, which then prompted growth within municipalities surrounding these cities and eventually growing to become the same urban area. Calgary, the third largest city if we only include the city proper, has basically no bordering municipalities and is an excellent example of a city where the city proper actually owns almost the entire urban area. The closest municipalities such as Airdrie, Cochrane, Chestermere and Okotoks are all obviously separated with a decent amount of space. The city however still follows the same urban patterns as our previous examples with a core and suburbs around the core. The only difference is that all of it is actually Calgary, the city proper and not another random municipality that is technically independent. This is actually the case for all prairie cities, including Edmonton, Saskatoon, Regina, Winnipeg, and etc. Also, just as an interesting side note, prairie cities tend to be the most sprawling of all, given the fact that they are much newer cities, having boomed during the post-war period where the car and the concept of suburbia with highways and whatnot was at its peak. Endless suburbs with impressive traffic, making commuting a very long process. If anyone has driven through Calgary from one end to the other, you will know what I'm talking about. Most eastern cities also follow this trend of just having one municipal entity governing the urban area. Ottawa is a staggering example where the city limits extend well beyond the urban area. We can see that the city includes vast amounts of farmland and wilderness. The city limits even extend 50 kilometers from the core in some areas. I mean, this might be a little exaggerated. I feel like the farmers located 50 kilometers away from the core is not too happy about contributing to municipal taxes 
designed to serve the urban population. This is however an extreme case, but this type of situation where city limits well extend the urban area can be relatively common in Canada, especially with smaller cities in Ontario and Quebec. Like look at Kingston or Drummondville. These city limits are, well, not really limiting. Anyways, I hope you learned something new on the true size of Canadian cities. Most cities are actually kind of much smaller than people tend to think. Anyways, if you liked the video, please consider liking it and even subscribing to the channel. And uh, I'll see you next time. Ciao, guys.